During the 20th century, something remarkable happened. African and Jewish communities around the world experienced parallel movements of national emancipation and reconstitution in their historic homelands. Jewish communities emerged from nearly 2,000 years of exile, inquisitions, expulsions, pogroms, and genocidal anti-Semitism to be re-established as a sovereign people in the state of Israel. African communities emerged from centuries of slavery, colonialism, segregation, lynchings, and institutional racism to be re-established as liberated peoples on the continent of Africa and in the diaspora. Before being reconstituted with sovereign rights, the bitter journey from rootedness in a homeland to a perilous existence of exile showed comparable calamities for Africans and Jews. Both diasporic communities were stereotyped, demonized, and dehumanized in what transpired into the most heinous crimes against humanity. Because Jews were often demonized and dehumanized, violence against them was justified by their enemies. The culmination of this demonization was the Holocaust, during which there was no sovereign Jewish nation to defend Jews or to provide them refuge from mass genocide. Corresponding atrocities were committed against Africans. Europeans seized African lands, exiled and enslaved millions of Africans, and stripped Africa of its sovereignty by military aggression. African features, such as coarse hair, dark skin, or and broad facial features were associated with inferiority in contrast to exalted European features. Yet, both the African and Jewish people have displayed an amazing resilience. This is seen among many areas within their historical quests to reestablish a homeland, and there is a long history of mutual inspiration. W.E.B. Du Bois, the renowned civil rights scholar, Pan-Africanist, and one of the founders of the NAACP saw parallels between Pan-Africanism and Zionism. In a 1919 editorial, Crisis, Du Bois wrote, The African movement means to us what the Zionist movement must mean to the Jews. Du Bois and the NAACP were supported by Jewish leadership, including Chairman Joel Spingarn and others who served on the NAACP board in its founding years. The most well-recognized leader of the civil rights movement, Dr. Martin Luther King Jr., was himself inspired by the Jewish story. In Dr. King's letter from a Birmingham jail, he quoted the Hebrew prophet Amos with the words, Let justice roll down like waters, and righteousness like a mighty stream. Dr. King's final sermon was deeply inspired by Moses' viewing of the promised land of Israel. Dr. King preached in the prophetic tradition of the ancient sages of Israel, We've got some difficult days ahead, but it doesn't matter with me now, because I've been to the mountaintop. And I don't mind. Like anybody, I would like to live a long life. Longevity has its place, but I'm not concerned about that now. I just want to do God's will. And he's allowed me to go up to the mountain. And I've looked over. And I've seen the promised land. I may not get there with you, but I want you to know tonight that we, as a people, will get to the promised land. For generations, African Americans have been inspired by Israel's deliverance from bondage and their establishment as a free and sovereign people in the promised land. Negro spirituals such as Go Down Moses and Joshua fought the Battle of Jericho were all inspired by the biblical story of liberation and establishment in the land of Israel. African American churches often took the names of Old Testament geographic sites, such as Mount Nebo, Mount Moriah, and Mount Zion. The mutual solidarity of the African and Jewish diasporas to stand against ethnic tyranny is profound. Just as Africans in the diaspora were inspired by the Jewish narrative of liberation, the Jewish community was inspired by African movements to boldly stand for civil rights and political freedom. 
the march to sovereignty by Africans and Jews has been symmetrically expressed in Pan-Africanism and Zionism, two sister movements. Founding father of modern Zionism, Theodore Herzl, drew a direct correlation between the aspirations of the Jewish people and the aspirations of the African diaspora. In a moving statement, Herzl expressed his desire to help advance the cause of African liberation and self-determination in the same way that he championed Jewish self-determination, stating, There is still one problem of racial misfortune unresolved. The depths of that problem, in all their horror, only a Jew can fathom. I mean the Negro problem. Think of the hair-raising horrors of the slave trade. Human beings, because their skins are black, are stolen, carried off, and sold. Now that I have lived to see the restoration of the Jews, I should like to pave the way for the restoration of the Negro. Herzl and other Zionists inspired the 19th century trailblazer of Pan-Africanism, Edward Blyden. Blyden, an Afro-Caribbean from St. Thomas, believed that Africans in the diaspora could only realize their human potential and secure their freedom by returning to Africa. Blyden himself emigrated to Liberia, where he served in several important government posts, as well as in Sierra Leone. Blyden believed that Zionism was a model of inspiration, that Africans in the diaspora should follow in their own quest for self-realization. He went so far as to coin a phrase for his vision that he saw as a counterpart to Zionism, Ethiopianism. In a pamphlet titled The Jewish Question, Blyden promoted the validity of Jewish efforts to be reestablished in Israel as an example for the African diaspora's repatriation in Africa. Blyden inspired the likes of Marcus Garvey and Ghanaian President Kwame Nkrumah, who kept a picture of Blyden on the wall of his office. Marcus Garvey perceived the re-establishment of sovereignty in Africa as the answer to the ills of Africans in the diaspora. Even earlier, in the 19th century, Martin Delaney advocated for African Americans to return to Liberia. In his work, The Condition, Elevation, Emigration, and Destiny of the Colored People of the United States, Delaney suggested that African Americans and Jews similarly deserved a sovereign home. Such also are the Jews, scattered throughout not only the length and breadth of Europe, but almost the habitable globe, maintaining their national characteristics and looking forward in high hopes of seeing the day when they may return to their former national position of self-government and independence. Let that be in whatever part of the habitable world it may. African countries and Israel have a mutual interest and natural affinity as nations that emerged out of European oppression into full sovereignty in the 20th century. The experiences of Israel have historically been a harbinger of things to come for Africans, and the recent successes of Israel can serve as a blueprint for African success. Similarly, it naturally flows that the future success and destiny of Israel is inextricably linked to its African roots. A resolute partnership between Israel, Africa, and the diasporic communities can propel the full self-realization of these communities whose destiny of contribution to the world is immeasurable.